Greetings, everybody. Learning is a hobby here. Welcome back to part five of my uh, continuing series, a tour of my bookshelf. Um, we're going to look at a sh one of my shelves here that contains mainly like discrete math and, and number theory books, as well as some um, like logic stuff. But uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, in the meantime, I'll uh, just to remind you, I, I'll put the uh, affiliate links down in this, the description bar below. So if you do choose to, to buy or purchase any of these through Amazon, if you could use the link down below, that'd be great. Uh, you'd be helping out the channel because uh, while it doesn't cost you anything extra, I get a little bit of a percentage off of that uh, from Amazon if you use that link. So please do that. <laughs> uh, and just a reminder, um, that uh, the Patreon is also up and running. Uh, so if you're interested in learning some uh, of the elementary level math that you need in order to do the stuff that we do on the channel uh, here on YouTube, then it, we join the Patreon. <laughs> it's only $5 a month. And we're going through uh, right now uh, Blitzer's elementary algebra or college algebra book. We're, gonna, we're doing the whole thing. Right now we're up to chapter seven. So um, if you, if you want to check that out, go to the Patreon page and you could sign up. But like I said, it's only $5 a month. And for that, you get the video lectures uh, as well as uh, homework assignments and solutions that I upload as PDFs. So, um, okay, enough of the, the self-promotion. Let's get to the books. Let me switch the camera around and then we'll we'll look at my my bookshelf over here. Okay, and let me just make sure that the volume is all right, because now I'm paranoid because of the other day. Um, all right, let me swing around over here, and uh, we'll start from left to right. Let me take the books off the top like I usually do, and then we'll talk about these last. <clears throat> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. So starting from left to right, um, I have a pretty standard book uh, in discrete math. And let me see if, uh, just make sure that the um, glare is not too much. So discrete math and its applications, sixth edition by Kenneth H. Rosen. This is a pretty standard work in, uh, you know, for a class in, uh, an undergraduate class in discrete math. Um, it's the one that I used when I took discrete math, and it's a pretty good book. Uh, there's like nice little, um, nice little uh, historical blurbs about mathematicians in the book as well, which is always a plus. Uh, the exercises are fine. Uh, the explanations are fine. Um, and like I said, it's a pretty standard work. A lot of colleges, including mine, use this as the, you know, pretty much uh, the book that they use for disc their discrete math course, which is usually broken up into two semesters. So you have uh, discrete one, which like covers the first half of the book, and then discrete two, which covers the second half of the book. Uh, this is one that I'd like to do on the channel, but I'm actually going to do this one on Patreon when whenever when I get around to it. So on the Patreon page right now, like I said in, uh, at the beginning, we're actually on uh, chapter seven of Blitzer's uh, College Algebra textbook. Uh, we're going to do Blitzer's uh, pre-calculus textbook after that. Then we're going to do Stewart's Calculus, uh, and then I think we'll do this one after Stewart's Calculus, uh, possibly even continue uh, next to each other. So probably at the same, maybe at the same time, not probably. <laughs> it's possible that I might choose to do these at the same time. But anyway, this is going to be one that I'm going to do on the Patreon. So, and, you know, just if you're interested, that's something to consider. Uh, next, I have... Um, a number theory book by John Watkins. Uh, we've met John Watkins already in the last video, and that's uh, for people that are just watching this for the first time. That's um, the uh, part four, where I talked about his John Watkins book on commutative ring theory, which is one of my favorite math books. Um, when I found out that he wrote a ring, uh, a number theory book, I had to pick it up because I love his writing so much. And this one I haven't had a chance to go through yet, but it, it seems to be done in a similar style to his ring theory book, and that is through a historical approach. So he gives you nice, you know, historical developments of the subject. Um, so I, I would love to do this one on the channel too. The only problem is uh, when I get to number theory, I think this one might be just a, a tad too 
uh, advanced for like a first book in, in uh, number theory. So uh, while I'd like to do this one on the channel, it might not be anytime soon, unfortunately. But anyway, this one's on my docket. I, I, I really uh, would like to get to this book. Uh, next is another one that I am going to do on the channel. <laughs> That's it's eventually. Uh, this is uh, Concrete Mathematics, a Foundation for Computer Science by Graham Newth and Potashnik. Uh, you might recognize the name Newth because he's a famous mathematician. Uh, this is his the second edition of this book. It's a pretty famous uh, discrete math book. Uh, and for that fact, because the exercises are are really fun and look really fun and interesting, and the explanations I'm sure are fantastic. Uh, this is one I, I would like to do on the channel when we get to discrete math. Uh, on the channel, I mean the the YouTube page. Um, I'm looking forward to this one because apparently, uh, supposedly, the the exercises are really fun, and like I said, it's just a you know considered a. a a classic. Uh, I haven't started on this yet, but like I said, what I when we get to discrete math on the YouTube channel, this is the one that I'm going to go through. So that's another one I'm really looking forward to. Okay, next we have another pretty standard, famous <laughs> number theory book. This is Elementary Number Theory and its Applications by Kenneth Rosen, who is the one that wrote the discrete math book that I just talked about. Um, this. This is the book, uh, along with another one that I'll, I'll talk about in a minute, that um, we used when I took uh, number theory as a student. Um, this is the fifth edition that I have. I think there are later editions of the book now, uh, but I don't have the later editions. I just have this one. This is the fifth edition. Um, and and same thing about this one that I could uh, that I you know have to say about the discrete math book. It's well written. There's nice little historical blurbs and and stuff spread out through the book um, that tell you about the mathematicians who invented or you know had some notable contribution to the stuff that you're learning in the book at that point. Um, so I've gone through uh, a lot of this book because we used it as as a textbook when I took number theory. Um, and like I said, it's well written. This is the book I think I'm going to go through when we get to number th theory on the channel, at least the first book that we'll do uh, is this one or the, the next one, um, which I'll talk about, <laughs> I'll talk about in a minute. Um, I haven't really decided. I keep, you know, sometimes I decide uh, this should be the one, but then you know, ne the next day I'll feel like, oh, the other one should be the one that I should do. Uh, so I'm still vacillating back and forth. And luckily, we're not up to number theory yet. So I, I don't have to make a choice just right at this moment. But this is one that uh, is a possibility, uh, uh, you know, a, a contender for the one that I'm going to do on the channel. And uh, to be honest, I think this one might end up winning out for, for various reasons. One, because it has a, an emphasis on computer, uh, you know, number theory to computer science. And uh, that will help us out when we start looking more in depth into cryptography uh, and also for, you know, physics when I, because I, I want to uh, teach myself Python at some point, which I still haven't gotten around to, believe it or not. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, but I, I can recommend this one. It's a decent book. Uh, this edition, the fifth edition, I would just say avoid that one. Get a newer or an older edition because... While the book itself is fine, the binding for the fourth edition is not that great. So, you know, if you use it a lot, like open it up, the, the pages tend to fall out and, the you know, the, the spine of the book tends to crack. So just be aware of that. Uh, I think they fixed that in later editions, but for the fifth edition, it, it's an issue. So just, uh, you know, purchasing warning for that one. Uh, the next one is the other one that I'm uh, planning on, you know, I, that's a contender for the number theory book I want to go through on the channel. The reason that I, this one is, well, let me re, let me say what it is first. This is Introduction to the Theory of Numbers by Niven Zuckerman Montgomery. This is a classic in the field. This is a pretty standard number theory book uh, that are used all, you know, it's used all over the place in colleges for, you know, elementary uh, number theory. This one is, I think, slightly more, um, advanced than the Rosen book, but not that by that much. Um, I think this one is more, how's the word? What's the word? This book is more aesthetically pleasing to a mathematician, I think, than the Rosen book. That's just my opinion. I, fi I find this book to be a bit more you know, if you if you can talk about like the aesthetics of mathematics, I find this one to be more aesthetically pleasing to my tastes. Um, 
and not just me. I mean, this is a famous book, so a lot of a lot of mathematicians like this one. Um, this is the fifth edition that I have. Unfortunately, I don't believe there will be any other editions because the authors. I believe all three of the authors are are deceased at this point. Unfortunately, um, certainly Ivan Niven is, um, but uh, it's a great book. And like I said, I. I you know, some days I vacillate between wanting to do this one on the channel or the Rosen one. It's probably going to end up being the Rosen one, to be honest. But I, I, I just like to fantasize about this one being <laughs> we'll go through this on the channel. But, you know, we'll see when the time comes around. Um, maybe I can do one on the Patreon and one uh, one on the, the YouTube channel. I don't know. Uh, OK, next two books are by Tom Apostol. One is an undergraduate number theory book. The other, whoops, the other is a graduate level uh, number theory book, and they come. They're they're supposed to be done in pairs. So I mean, you know, this you could consider this like volume one and this volume two. Um, the first one, this the the undergraduate book is Tom Apostol, uh, Introduction to Analytic Number Theory, and then the graduate level one again by Tom Apostol is Modular Functions and Dirichlet Series in Number Theory. Um, I haven't gone through either of these books, but I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, after we get through the elementary number theory stuff, I this is the next number theory book I'd like to do, the analytic number theory stuff from Tom Apostel's book. Um, and then, you know, whenever <laughs> we get to, if, if we ever get to it before, you know, <laughs> before I end up in the grave, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get to volume two at some point. Uh, Tom Apostol, I don't have to, you know, say, I've said so much about Tom Apostol in, the, in my videos. Uh, I don't really have to say home, uh, so much more. Uh, great author. He's one of my favorite authors, actually. Um, okay, next one is uh, Classical Introduction to Modern Number Theory by Ireland and Ro Michael Rose, uh, Kenneth Ireland and Michael Rosen. This is the second edition that I have. Uh, that I haven't done anything in this book, but it looks interesting. And I know that they use this book in my college for the, the graduate level number theory course. So I wanted to pick it up and, you know, maybe go through it at some point. Uh, then I have Lang's famous book on algebraic number theory, second edition, Serge Lang. Again, I haven't done anything with this, but it's one that I'm looking forward to going through at some point. All right, another famous book next, uh, Neil Koblitz, Introduction to Elliptic Curves and Modular Forms. I'd like to do this one because I have both of his books on number theory, which we'll, we'll look at when we get to my uh, shelf on number theory. Um, and I, you know, in elliptic curves and modular forms are important in number theory. So uh, yeah, I'd lo I'm looking forward eventually to, to doing this. But I think the first book that I'm going to do on elliptic curves is this one, which is next by uh, Joe Silverman and John Tate. This is Rational Points on Elliptic Curves, second edition. Um, this one came recommended through a YouTube channel. I, I apologize. I don't remember uh, the name of the YouTube channel anymore because I it was so long ago. But uh, I remember watching a, a video, um, you know, on a mathematician, mathematician video on YouTube at some point, and they recommended this book. This is an undergraduate level book. Uh, and like, like it says, it's on rational points on elliptic curves. So I'd like to do my first study of elliptic curves. I'd like to be with this book. Um, then I have, uh, unsurprisingly, a couple books by John Stilwell. Uh, this is his Elements of Number Theory, which is supposed to go in tandem with uh, the book. One of the books I mentioned. Um, whoops, one of the books I mentioned in the last video, which is this one, Elements of Algebra. So these are supposed to go together, um, and you know, maybe at some point, who knows? Maybe we'll get to to do both of them on the channel. I don't know, but I also have his. Uh, relatively recently published book on algebraic number theory for beginners. Uh, subtitle is Following a Path from Euclid to Nother, uh, again, by John Stilwell. Um, so yeah, these, you know, John Stilwell's, you can, <laughs> I'm sure you have the idea at this point that John Stilwell is one of my favorite authors. Uh, I think I mentioned in a, another video that I, I'm pretty sure I have literally every book John Stilwell ever wrote. <laughs> um, Next book is on piadic numbers and introduction. Uh, I'd like to go through a, a piadic number book, number theory book at some point. Uh, I never got to take a class in piadic numbers in college, unfortunately, but they're interesting. So I would like to um, 
to go through, you know, a book on, on um, uh, piatic numbers at some point. Maybe it'll be this one. Uh, then I have whoop, uh, a couple other of the AMS like project books uh, that I've been talking about. Uh, again, these are books that, you know, would make a nice summer project for someone who's interested in math. Uh, this one is on piatic analysis compared with real. So I would, I he, here's here's the deal. I like I just mentioned. I want to learn piatic analysis, uh, and I think I want to do this book on the channel. This piatic analysis book compared with real numbers. I want to kind of do it in conjunction with, uh, sorry, not John Stillwell's book, with um, Abbott's book, understanding analysis so that we can really get a sense of the difference between the two types of uh, subjects. Um, so this one, you know, compares piatic analysis with real analysis. I, I just think it might be f fun as a series to see, you know, the development of both of these subjects side by side. So one of the things I'm thinking about doing when I get to Abbott's book is do this alongside with it. Uh, I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Does that sound interesting? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, of course, I'm really excited to get finally get around to Abbott's book whenever we finish uh, Spivak, but uh, this one sounds interesting too. Like I said, this is a, a one of those project books by the put out by the AMS, um, so it's meant for like self study and uh, for, it's written for an undergraduate audience. So, and then the other project book that I have next to it here is also important you know, on an important subject for number theory, which is elliptic curves, modular forms, and their L functions. Again, this might make an interesting project as well, because I'd like to learn this stuff for all of this has like, you know, applications to, to uh, cryptography and so on. Uh, next book is a, a very famous one in the, in the literature, an introduction to the theory of numbers by Hardy and Wright. Um, this is like, you know, this is a, <laughs> I mean, this is like the classic book on number theory. Uh, it also has uh, an, uh, sorry, it's revised by Heath Brown and J.H. Silverman, who is the one that wrote uh, the um, the Rational Points and Elliptic Curves book. J.H. Uh, Silverman, by the way, has, uh, I believe he has works on on cryptography, but he also has work on, works on um uh, on number theory as well. He has a, a, a textbook on number theory that I don't have, unfortunately, but um, that might be an interesting one to look into at some point. Uh, but anyway, uh, the version of Hardy's book, Hardy and Wright's book on number theory that I have here, um, which is the sixth edition, by the way, uh, is revised by one of the people that revised it, uh, H. J. H. Silverman. Um, and this is one that I haven't really looked at, just like, I, you know, I have a few of Hardy's books and I haven't had a chance really to look at them. Um, but, you know, one can dream <laughs> someday going through them. So um, what do I have next on the shelf? If I can fit this back in here. OK, next is um, a bo a bo another book by David Cox. If you recall from the fourth video. Uh, part four of this series. Uh, David Cox is the guy who wrote this book on Galois theory that we're going to go through on the channel. Um, and this is a book that he wrote on num uh, topic in number theory, uh, Pell's equation. Uh, this is primes of the form x squared plus ny squared. Um, so, th you know, this expressions like this allow you to, um, you know, study the nature of uh, uh, irrational numbers and things like that. The the subtitle is, excuse me, the subtitle is Fermat class field theory and complex multiplication. Um, so yeah, I haven't read this one, but um, it looks like it would be an interesting topic. So uh, next is a discrete math book that they used at my college one semester. Uh, I've read portions of it and it's pretty good, uh, but I haven't done a whole lot with it. Uh, this is Discrete Mathematics, Elementary and Beyond by Lovest, Pelican, and Vester Gombe. Um, this is not one that you hear too much about, and it's fine. It's nothing like great. I, I would say uh, the level of this book is, is less advanced than the Rosen book. 
Um, so if you're looking for, you know, maybe a, an easier book to get through to start with, this might be a good choice. But like I said, we're going to start with the Rosen book. Um, but it's fine. Uh, you know, like I said, they only used it one semester at my my college for the discrete math uh, course. So I don't know. Uh, next one is a book on combinatorics, which is the book I want to go through when I get to combinatorics. Um, this is a walk through combinatorics and introduction to enumeration and graph theory. This is the fourth edition by Miklos Bona uh, with a forward by Richard Stanley. I haven't started on this yet. Uh, so I can't really talk about it, but it, it looks like it's, it comes highly recommended. Uh, and it looks interesting. It looks like there's really fun problems in this book. So when, when I get around to combinatorics, uh, this is the one that we're going to go through. Uh, another one, next book is another really interesting one that I have that I'd like to make my way through, which is uh, this book by Herbert uh, Wilf. Uh, this is Generating Functionology, third edition. Um, you don't have to buy a physical copy of this book. I think you can download a copy of this for free from the, the author's website, along with several other of his textbooks, uh, which is nice that he he does that. So um, this is a generating functions are an important topic in, you know, number theory, uh, analysis, uh, probability theory, statistics, and so on. Um, and this is uh, Wilf's book on that uh, famous mathematician. Um, I've read portions of it, but I haven't gone too in depth into this book, but the topic sounds interesting. So maybe this one might be something to look into when we get around to statistics and probability theory. All right, next one I have here is The Annotated Girl, A Reader's Guide to His Classic Papers on Logic and Incomplete Incompleteness by Hal Prince. Uh, this is a relatively recent purchase, so I haven't really looked too much at this, but um, I've always been fascinated with uh, Girdle's paper on incompleteness. So uh, this is a, an annotated guide to his paper. Um, another interesting book here by Richard Feynman. This is the Feynman Lectures on Computation. Um, again, I haven't read the whole thing here. I've read portions of it. And it's uh, an interesting development of, uh, you know, it starts like right at the beginning. So if you know nothing about computation, then you know, this is a good good uh, read uh, for someone like that. Um, I haven't gone through the whole book, but, you know, I have like all of Feynman's, <laughs> Feynman's books too. Um, so this is an, I don't know, it's an interesting read. Uh, then I have this book, which I've talked about on the channel before, The Logic Book, fourth edition by Bergman, Moore, and Nelson. Um, this is the book that I learned logic from when I was an undergraduate. This is the book that we used for uh, the logic sequence, which... Uh, there were three classes that I that I took that used this book. We had like uh, in like in, uh, introductory logic, then we had intermediate logic, and then I we used uh, part of this book along with my uh, instructor's lecture notes for uh, the course that I took on mathematical logic. Uh, and it's a fine book on logic. It's nothing special. Uh, there is a um, a solutions manual that you can. Uh, that you can get for this book, which I didn't have when I made my book videos a while ago, but I, I was able to pick up, if I can find it on my bookshelf here, um, I was able to find a used copy of the um, solutions manual for this uh, uh, for 50 cents from a college library that was getting rid of their books. Um, uh, so it, it has a it has a solutions manual for selected exercises. Uh, I can't say like really how good the, these are because I haven't really the solutions. I mean, because I haven't really looked at uh, this book even in years and years. Uh, but you know, maybe at some point we might do logic on the channel. Who knows? Uh, I I tend to find logic to be a bit dry. Um, that's just, again, just my opinion, but I don't know. It's an important topic. So maybe at some point we'll take a look at uh, this textbook on the channel. Uh, next is a book on set theory, sets, models, and proofs by Mordich. I don't know how to, I'm sorry. I'm probably mispronouncing that name. And then uh, Van Oosten. Um, this is a book on, uh, you know, introductory book on set theory. So it's meant for undergraduates. Uh, I haven't really done too much with this. I, re I think I read the first chapter, did the exercises for the first chapter and it seemed fine, but I, I 
just kind of lost interest uh, a little way into it. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I should get back to this book at some point. Then I have uh, next is a, a classic on uh, set theory. This is Naive, Naive Set Theory by Paul Halmos. Um, every math uh, major or person who wants to study math should have this book on their shelf and you should read through it. Um, it's kind of like similar to, you know, um, reading through uh, Landau's Foundations of Analysis. You kind of have to do it. Um, so this book basically gives you everything you need to know as a math major about set theory. Uh, there is one weakness of this book in that there's no exercises, unfortunately, but the exposition is uh, you really need to read through it. Um, and it's kind of short, so it's not like it's, a, you know, like a very long read. Um, Again, the, the topic of set theory, just again, just in my opinion, seems to be a bit dry. But uh, again, maybe I just haven't, you know, looked at the right topics or books yet. Um, then I have uh, a few books on category theory. This is like the book on category theory uh, written by one of the inventors of the subject, Saunders McLean. This is Categories for the Working Mathematician, second edition. Then I have this, uh, this is a graduate level text. Then I have Conceptual Mathematics, a first introduction to categories, second edition by Laver and Chanoul. Uh, this is an undergrad, made for an undergraduate uh, audience. And I think if you wanna learn, um, if you wanna learn category theory, I would suggest, you know, as a self-study, I would suggest this book. It's a very gentle introduction to the, to the topic. Um, we might go through this one on the, on the channel at some point. I don't know. Uh, and then next to that, I have uh, another pretty standard work on uh, category theory. This is Category Theory for the Sciences by David Spivak, not Michael Spivak. Um, and this is another one good one for self-study, too. I think I've read through the first chapter of this, and it was really well written and, and you know, explains the topics really well. Um, so I think when I go through category, if I go through category theory on the on the channel at some point, it's going to be one of these two books. But, uh, you know, that's a long way away, so I don't have to make that decision just yet. <laughs> uh, the next two books are go together. They're volume one and volume two. This is Mathematical Logic by A Beginner's Guide to Mathematical Logic by Raymond Smullyan, the famous logician. And then this is volume two, which uh, you know is a sequel to this book, A Beginner's Further Guide to Mathematical Logic, again, by Raymond Smullyan. Uh, again, these would be great for self-studying um, log uh, mathematical logic. I definitely recommend both of them. They're written fantastically. He's a great author, Smullyan. He knows how to write. He knows how to make the subject interesting. And he has uh, great problems in the book. In both in both books. Right, next, I have um, maybe I'll just take the next three actually off. Uh, uh, this is um, introduction to logic and to the methodology of deductive sciences by Alfred Tarski. Uh, if you're going to get a logic book to start with, uh, I would say get the the Smolian books and get this one by Alfred Tarski. Alfred, Alfred Tar Tarski, famous uh, logician as well, uh, did a lot of uh, groundbreaking work in in uh, logic, the, the subject of logic. This book was originally written for a lay audience, so it was, it was meant as like a popular introduction to logic, but uh, it became so popular that he decided to actually add uh, some stuff to it to, to make it into a useful textbook to learn logic from. So it now this book now has exercises in it and it has uh, you know more topics in it. And it's written uh, a lot more interestingly than the logic book by Bergman. Uh, if you're gonna like I said, if you're gonna actually try and learn logic, uh, self-studying it, I would say the get these three books. So get Tarski's book and get the two Smullyan books, and that'll be a good a good uh, place to start. Whoop! And then you know you can go from there. Okay. And then the other two books that I have here. Uh, let's do this one first. This is Numerical Methods for Scientists and Engineers by R.W. Hamming. I've talked about uh, Richard Hamming before um, and recommended these other two books by him on uh, one of the previous videos. 
uh, Methods of Mathematics by Richard Hamming and The Art of Probability by, by uh, Richard Hamming. All of his books, all three of these books, I think if you want to learn mathematics, is these these you should have on your shelf for enrichment. They're, they're really well written. He's uh, such a brilliant author. Um, a lot of insight. He gives you a lot of insight into uh, things into the the topic that you're looking at. I uh, highly recommend reading his books. He also has a nice uh, series of uh, lectures on YouTube that you can you know look at for free um, on uh, the application of uh, mathematics to science. Uh, I recommend those lectures too. They're really interesting. Uh, but this is his book on numerical methods. Uh, it's a Dover. All three of those are are Dover titles, I think. Um, so they're kind of cheap. And then the last book here is uh, Girdle's Proof by Nagel Newman. Um, this book, I attended a, uh, a lecture at my, uh, at my college when I was an undergraduate. Uh, some, one of the professors did a lecture that uh, was on this book. So he like, you know, explained Girdle's incompleteness, uh, paper on incompleteness by going through uh, this book. And that was an interesting lecture series. So I decided after that, that I would get this and actually read it myself. Um, okay, that's all the books that are on the shelf here. Then I had a bunch of books on top. So let me go through those next. Um, a lot of these are kind of like just a jumble of different things. Uh, for example, I have David Griffith's Revolutions in 20th Century Physics, uh, which is sort of like, um, you know, a, a smattering of topics from his different physics books. Um, I'm really excited uh, to get to when we get to this, these topics in my physics studies. Uh, where is, oh, here. Uh, I'm excited to get to his books on uh, quantum mechanics and electrodynamics, but this is his book. Like I said, it's meant for uh, like a popular audience uh, and it has exercises in it though. So even though it's like a, a popularizing book, um, it has some, some meat to it. Um, so I have this, this book by him. I guess you can think of this as kind of like, it's almost like a modern physics book, but you know, very com compact. So um, then I have, uh, Feynman's Tips on Physics. Um, this is written by Feynman Gottlieb Le uh, Leighton. Um, so this is a companion for uh, Richard Feynman's uh, lectures on physics, which we'll get to on another shelf at some point. Um, so this is like, you know, the sort of like the mathematics background that you need in order to, to do those books. Um, I have Finite Difference Equations by Levy and Lessman. Uh, this is a Dover book. Uh, finite difference equations are interesting. I haven't read this one though. Uh, then I have First Order Logic by Raymond Smullyan. Again, First Order Logic is an important thing. Um, haven't read this one yet, but you know, Raymond Smullyan. I have a bunch of Smullyan's books because he's such a good writer. Um, whoops. He's, I'm dropping everything. <laughs> Uh, next, I have Girdle's Theorem, An Incomplete Guide to Its Use and Abuse. Haven't read it yet. Um, I have, these are, these are all Dover books, the next few of them. Um, a Book of Abstract Algebra, Second Edition by Charles Pinter. They use this book every once in a while for the undergraduate uh, abstract algebra course at my college and people seem to like it all right. It is a Dover book, so it's nice to have that as a textbook because it's only a few bucks. Uh, and people seem to like this one. I haven't done too much with it. I've done some things in it because I've tutored, you know, that course. Um, and sometimes they use this book. So I've done some of this stuff and it's a, it seems like an interesting uh, book. Then I have Introduction to Graph Theory by Gary Chartrand, who is the author of that proof. Let me see if I can grab it. Who is the author of this proof book that I talked about in a previous video? Um, I've read I I read this one. Sorry, not the whole thing. I've read portions of this one in Bar Barnes and Noble like years ago, and I thought he was such a good writer that I had to pick up the book. It's a Dover title too. So if you're interested in graph theory, this is a, a nice one to self study with. Um, then I have this book. This is also a Dover title, 
basic abstract algebra for grad students and under and advanced undergraduates uh, by Robert Ash. Again, this is a Dover book, so it's nice and cheap. Um, the nice thing about this book is it has solution, like worked out solutions to the exercises. So again, you know, whenever a book has that, it's it's probably more useful for self study because you have the answer, so you can check. You know, when you solve the problems, you can check them. Um, all right, uh, it's just two more books to talk about here. Uh, this is a, also a Dover book, and there's, I didn't realize this, but there's a few more of these that I, I'll have to pick up at some point. This is Mathematical Recreations of Lewis Carroll, um, Symbolic Game of Logic, uh, two books bound as one. There's other volumes of this, uh, of, you know, in this series as well, like I said, that I don't have. Uh, Lewis Carroll, if you don't know, was also a, a mathematician, and he has a bunch of math books, that textbooks that he wrote, uh, which I talked about on the channel like a while back. Uh, so he has like a book on like matrix algebra and some other stuff. Um, so just interesting because I, I, he obviously, uh, maybe you don't know, but Lewis Carroll, you know, wrote uh, Alice in Wonderland. Um, but a lot of people don't realize that he was also a mathematician. And he put a lot of like mathematical Easter eggs uh, hidden throughout um, um, Alice in Wonderland as well. And then the last book I have here uh, before I end the video is Mathematical Modeling by Eck Gar uh, Garke and Nabner. Hopefully I'm pronouncing those names correctly. Um, this is also a relatively recent uh, purchase. Um, I haven't gotten around to looking through this yet, but mathematical modeling is always a fun subject, at least for me. So this whole book is on uh, interesting, you know, modeling scenarios and stuff, I guess. So that's it. That's um, my top shelf over here. Uh, the next bookshelf, I think uh, I'm going to do. Actually, you know what? Let me swing back around so I can say goodbye to you guys and talk about what's next. Uh, let me turn the camera around. OK, uh, so the next video I'm going to do is going to be, I think, on uh, my cryptography books. So look, uh, look out for that. Uh, I still have a bunch of bookshelves left to go over. I have, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven bookshelves left to do. <laughs> and that's just on my math books. Um, so yeah, we, we still got, got a ways to go. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying these videos, by the way. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments as, as always. Please do like and subscribe. It helps the channel grow. And if you could, uh, you know, if you're interested in in buying some of the books, I'll put the affiliate links down below. Please use the affiliate link because I get a little kickback from Amazon. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it helps the channel out uh, to fund, uh, you know, continuing videos here. Uh, and also check out the Patreon. Like I said, it's only $5 a month and you get a lot of content for those $5. Um, all right. I'll see you guys in the next one. Keep learning, everyone. And uh, like I said, let me know what you think in the comments.